Welcome, it's John Tech Lock, and today I'm going to show you five new cool applications that you must have for your new computer. Um, now, most of these applications work for both Mac and PC. Actually, all five of them work for a Macintosh and a PC computer, whether it be Windows 7 or Windows 8. Today, I'm going to show you on Windows 8. Um, so first off, let's go by um, into our Google Chrome, and I'm going to show you this really cool plugin. It's also an application known as dash lane now what dash lane allows you to do is store multiple um, store multiple passwords and accounts uh, just based off of one account that you sign in that stores all your information now this isn't a new uh, idea it's not a new concept it's been around for a while but there hasn't really been a program that's offered um, as much support or offered um, such a great flexibility um, and efficiency as the program Dashlane. Now what it does is um, it can work with Google Chrome, it can also work with Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. Um, it doesn't work with Safari yet, uh, not with my knowledge, um, but I'm pretty sure they will come up with a plugin um, if Apple allows it. Now um, if I go to Dashlane uh, on Google, just type in Dashlane.com, um, I'll be able to download this little application um, actually, I'm sorry, it does work with Safari. So, uh, yeah, there we go. The four most popular web browsers this works just perfectly fine with. Um, so you can just hit get Dashlane. It's free. Um, link over there, and I'll have it in my description box. Um, and the great thing about Dashlane is that um, it works uh, from computer to computer. So let's say I have my PC in my house. If I go into my computer in my office, um, all I have to do is download Dashlane um, as a plug-in and I'll be able to access all my passwords for multiple accounts. Now I know a lot of people who own um, just maybe five or six accounts, uh, but then I also know a lot of people who own maybe 20 to 30 accounts. Uh, banking information, personal email, um, different types of social networking, uh, accounts for things like the Washington Post or things like New York Times, accounts like those that a lot of people just don't have the time or patience to remember all the complex passwords that they've implemented. Uh, Dashlane is there for you. Um, so once you download Dashlane, there will be a plug in either whatever web browser you're using. Uh, in my case, it's going to be um, uh, Google Chrome. So there's a little plug in that if you click, um, it's going to come up with this little box, um, this little dialog box that allows you to log in with whatever email address you used um, to sign up. So you can cr have to create an account, and this is going to be the first, I guess, the uh, first account. And let's say if this was sort of like a pyramid, this would be all the way at the top. And this account stores all the uh, different accounts that you will have in the future or that you already use. Uh, so let's say I log in with an email address that I always use. I create my master password. And then it will remember all my passwords for Facebook, for Gmail, for everything. So um, if I go into Gmail, it will automatically log me in. Now the cool thing about this is that if I close out of the web browser, um, it will still be there. However, if I close out of the web browser, let's say I'm going to use on a, a shared computer, or if I have other family members using my computer, all I have to do is click Dashlane, um, or I'm sorry, uh, double-click Dashlane, and then uh, there will be a little box that comes out that says Sign Out. And I'll go ahead and show this to you right now. So once it authenticates, if I click on it, right there, that little button says log out. I can log out of that, and you, it's going to come up with, do you really want to log out? You hit yes, um, and then your information is not going to be stored. Your password will not be stored, regardless of whatever um, username or whatever you have stored in there. So Dashlane is a great software that I totally recommend. I've been using it for the past week, and I really enjoy it. Um, it saves you a lot of time. Um, now the next pieces of software you guys may already know, uh, VLC Media Player is single-handedly the best media player in the realm of computing. Um, Cross-platform support, Mac, PC, Linux, whatever you have, VLC is going to be there for you. And you don't have to deal with the arbitrary bullshit laws like the QuickTime players can't play AVI or can't uh, some of the Windows Media Player codecs aren't installed properly. You don't have to worry about any of that shit. VLC will take care of it. It's open source. So you have nothing to worry about. Um, and a lot of people don't know that with VLC you'd be able to uh, play um, things that are on your network from another location um, and you can do it straight off of the interface itself or you can stream podcasts or you can stream uh, different websites if you could add you'd be able to type in the name of um, a link or you'd be able to add certain files that you would uh, you, that you want to add or you can enter a network URL 
as in right here. Um, and you can do a ton of other things. You can drag and drop a podcast link straight into VLC Media Player, and most of the times it will recognize it. So VLC Media Player, very nice. You can customize almost everything on it. Um, and it's just a great piece of software for uh, people who are using a lot of media or people who aren't going to use a lot of media. Uh, but it's going to be there. And, of course, it's cross-platform, just like Dashlane, and that leads me to TeamViewer. Uh, TeamViewer is one of those applications that is needed for everyone who's a computer nerd uh, because, guess what, I bet there's 100% of you computer nerds that help out other people uh, that don't live in your home. Uh, so if you download TeamViewer and if they download TeamViewer as well, you'd be able to share your screen or, more importantly, you'd be able to access their computer um, and do things that would take them an hour to explain over the phone. Um, so it's just like having remote support, remote setup, uh, a lot less complex than using uh, Windows remote desktop service uh, since you're going to be in different networks. Uh, so TeamViewer simplifies that. And of course it's a free license. All, all the programs that I've uh, shown so far are free. So you'd be able to uh, download and do whatever you want with it. Uh, anyway, TeamViewer is a great piece of software for anyone who uh, is a computing, um, I guess an expert who's helping other people out. And it's also not just for that reason. Let's say you're in your office and you have TeamViewer on a computer that's turned on in your home and you want to access some files or you want to just do some basic maintenance on your computer or just see what's going on with your computer. You can use TeamViewer, access it from an online portal from TeamViewer.com, log in with your account. Um, or you can just use TeamViewer, the application, from the desktop and run it straight from your computer in your office and uh, access your computer on uh, in your home. So TeamViewer does allow you to do that. So a lot of flexibility again. Um, and then the next two uh, things I'm going to show you are online services that are completely free and um, eliminate your desire or need for things like Photoshop or Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. Uh, so the name of one of the... Uh, one of the first websites I'm going to show you is called PicMonkey, and what PicMonkey allows you to do is edit photos, just like I was saying. Now, the cool thing about uh, online editing photo, uh, I guess, portals or software, uh, is that it's even though it's basic, it's pretty much exactly what people really want to do with their photo editing software. People want Photoshop just to tweak a little, uh, tweak little things like the exposure or shadows, and they don't really need it for all the complex. Uh, things that you can do with it. So things like PicMonkey and Pixlr, uh, which is the next thing I'm going to show you, uh, offers uh, great services for those who just aren't going to do a lot of things. Uh, so let me just show you briefly. This is a picture I took of some leaves. Um, I can crop the image. I can rotate it. I can even set the exposure so I can increase the brightness uh, or I can reduce the brightness. I can mess around with the highlights, um, mess around with shadows and the contrast, and I can have a totally different photo. Um, I can do the same thing with colors um, just by adding uh, saturation or decreasing the temperature, making it colder or warmer, whatever I want to do. Or I can even sharpen the image. Um, and these are very, very basic things that allow you to control your image um, without the need of having some crazy software. Um, so yeah, that's PicMonkey and the other one will be Pixlr. Um, and with Pixlr show you right now you will have to create an account I believe uh, so if yeah if you just log in create an account The cool thing about Pixlr is that you can also use it on uh, Android devices or Apple iOS devices so you can use it on a smartphone or an iPad and it's really easy to download on an iPad uh, and a sm or on any type of tablet it makes it really nice to use you can use your touch screen or you can even use uh, one of those toothbrush styluses that they've come out with just, excuse me one of those toothbrush styluses that they came out with so that'd be great uh, for anyone who would need that. Uh, so yeah, pretty much it. Five applications must need applications for anyone who is um, trying to increase productivity on their computer, whether it be a PC, a Mac, or if it's a Linux computer, doesn't matter. Um, I support all three of you guys. So uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, uh, like the video, share, and uh, just keep watching the rest of the videos. Uh, have a great week, guys.